What's up guys, Matt here from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. So as many of you already know, Harley-Davidson recently released a 30th year anniversary Fat Boy to commemorate the 30 years that the Fat Boy has been in production and a part of the Harley-Davidson lineup. This bike was actually announced a couple months ago and I just haven't had a chance to get to it, but better late than never, right? So I wanna talk about a few things that can probably be attributed to the reason why the Fat Boy is such a widely known model. A cameo in one of the greatest action movies of all time, a conspiracy theory behind the naming and the design of the bike, and just the out of the box fat radical styling, especially for its time in the early 90s. Let's talk about what makes the Fat Boy one of the most iconic American motorcycles of all time. So let's take a close look and a walk around of the 30th year anniversary Fat Boy commemorating 30 years of Fat Boy goodness in this 2020 model year. So you basically take your Fat Boy, which was completely redesigned in the 2018 model year, and you add a lot of black finishes to it with some really cool bronze highlights. Let's start off at the front of the bike where you've got the big bulky muscular forks up front and you've got the large seven inch nacelle headlamp, got kind of a freight train style up there. The Fat Boy has always been known for its really large 7 inch headlamps. Let's go to the wheels. The wheels have always been kind of a controversial topic with the whole Fat Boy. And there's a huge myth surrounding them actually that I'll clear up right now. And that myth is, is since they have a solid mag wheel up front that these bikes don't do well in the wind because if you get a strong crosswind, the, I guess the large surface area on the wheels is going to blow you off the road. And that cannot be further from the truth. That is just the biggest BS myth that I've heard people tell me over the years that has absolutely no validity at all. So that's number one of kind of the, the myths that follow this bike. Before the 2018 model year redesign, there were actually bullet holes in the wheels, which actually coincides with another big conspiracy theory that goes on around the naming and the design of this bike. Here on the cam timer cover, you've got the 30th anniversary insignia on here. And you've got some really cool bronze highlights on here in the lower rocker box covers. You've got this nice perforated seat up here, which is the same as the regular seat. And you've got the center console that has like the bullet holes. And here you've got the medallion on the center console which tells you basically the vehicle number this is a serialized bike so this is highly collectible there are only 2,500 of them being made in the world definitely a bike that if you're looking to collect a fat boy this is the bike you're gonna want to buy I didn't put any miles on this bike you won't see me test riding it for the reasons I just said I think there's gonna be some people that buy these bikes for the collector value and so I would never want to compromise that by putting mileage on it but I think for the most part people are gonna buy them and ride them and enjoy them. You got the derby cover here which also has a bronze text or font on it with the 114. This bike only comes in a 114 unlike the Fat Boy when it first came out in 2018. Lower rocker box covers you got the bronze as well which is kind of a cool touch a nice highlight. The front brake caliper you can kind of see there as well you've got a touch of the bronze. Here's the military inspired logo or insignia that's kind of the, the same classic look they've been using on the Fat Boy for a long time now. The bar setup and everything is just very simplistic very bold bulky muscular look which is kind of one of the things that I love about the fat boy everything is just really large and very simple not a whole lot of really tightly knit detail in this bike everything is just really big and bulky and simplistic which is kind of gets its beauty from its simplicity. So you got a really large 130 millimeter front tire on here as well. And if you guys want to watch some of my past reviews on this thing, you're welcome to. You get a lot of information about how this thing you know, handles and what to expect from it. So this bike is kind of your muscle drag cruiser is really the best way I can describe it. It's not going to be something you take up in the twisties, scrape floorboard a lot. You know, this is a bike that you just cruise profile, you know, rip it in the straights. It's really fun to do with this bike as well. But it's not going to be really quick and agile in and out of the turns, that's for sure. And you've got kind of this dual exhaust look on here. Let's jump in real quick to kind of the big, what's kind of becoming a, a conspiracy theory around the, the naming and kind of the styling and design of the Fat Boy. And funny because for, for years and years, I always just kind of took this as doctrine until, you know, I, I started hearing, you know, that Harley Davidson claims that this it's false. And a lot of people are are really kind of getting upset about how this is, is not PC. But the conspiracy theory is, is the name is derived from the two atom bombs that were dropped in 1945 on Japan to end World War II. The two names of the bombs were Little Boy and Fat Man. So you combine those two names and, and 
name Fat Boy. And to kind of further reinforce, you know, that theory around kind of the, the design and naming of the bike is the insignia. You have that circular insignia with the star in the middle with the two wings on the outside. The two wings represent the Air Force. Of course, you know, the Air Force dropping the bombs. The star in the center of the insignia just kind of represent the military in general. And I've even heard people go as far as to say that the wheels are very similar to the wheels that are found on the bomber planes that actually dropped the bombs. And there's a, there's a couple other details that, you know, people really go into sometimes and, and I think that kind of gets out of control. But of course, Harley Davidson, even if it was true, would never admit that now. I mean, they don't want one of their bikes celebrating war and killing, you know, tons of Japanese people during the war. And I've talked about that story or that conspiracy theory in some of my other Fat Boy videos. And you get those people that don't even want to hear about it because it's definitely not PC. The evidence is and the similarities and kind of the hints and clues on the bike are just too pronounced to ignore. And I've just, you know, so many people have talked about it. And I've talked to people at different dealerships and internally and things like that that have kind of thought the same thing and confirmed it. So I don't know. Let, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Did, did the original designers of the Fat Boy name it and design it to represent the two atom bombs that were dropped? Let me know what you guys think. Let's take it back to 1990 for a second, though. Around that time, Willie G was really well known known for really picking up on what the customizers were doing and kind of the aftermarket companies and whatnot. And so he really, I, I feel like, identified this trend early on of going to this bigger, bulkier, and fatter look and design in the Harley-Davidson world. And I feel like the fat boy kind of pioneered that path to make Harley-Davidson's even bigger and, and more muscular looking, which I think has translated to a certain degree into a lot of the other bikes as well. And then around the 2000s, 2005, 2006, 2007 time, you know, the tires on the Fat Boy got even bigger. And so over the years, the, everything on the, the Fat Boy has just gotten larger and larger. And, and then in the 2018 model year, they went to the 240 millimeter rear tire and the 130 front tire. And so they basically went all in and put the combination of the fattest tires we've ever seen on any Harley Davidson ever on this new Fat Boy, which I think is cool. It's, it just makes it more pronounced and it makes it live up to its name a lot more and, and being fat. So let's talk about the other thing that I think has made the Fat Boy really get propelled just into the Harley Davidson and American Cruiser Hall of Fame, and that is its appearance in Terminator 2 Judgment Day when it was graced with Arnold Schwarzenegger riding on it, chasing around T-1000, Robert Patrick's character, and saving John Connor. I don't know how the negotiations went down, quite frankly, but I think Harley Davidson definitely got its money's worth when they supplied the bike or paid for it to be in the movie again. Again, I don't know what the contract was, but this is definitely in the top five or top 10 most cited motorcycle scenes in Hollywood history. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think Harley Davidson needs to pursue more of these opportunities. In recent years, they've done a lot of stuff with the Marvel Universe and having live wires in the street and just different bikes in the Marvel Universe, but you can never really tell that it's a Harley Davidson in there and just the camera time that the Fat Boy got during that era absolutely propelled the Fat Boy to a wild success during that time. Terminator 2 was actually one of those movies that kind of solidified my love for the brand and the chase scene in the LA River is forever going to be my favorite chase scene ever in a movie and the bar scene when Arnold Schwarzenegger goes in, takes the guy's clothes, his boots and his motorcycle and rides off is still one of the most recognizable motorcycle bar scenes in Hollywood history. It's always interesting. We get a lot of tourism in our dealership mostly just because we're in Los Angeles and people come to California to go on vacations a lot and it seems like when we get a lot of the tourists in there from other countries that don't know a lot about Harley Davidson but they want to go see Harley because they're in America and they're in California and they feel like they just want to go into a shop and get some merchandise or whatever usually the only bike they ask for is the fat boy where are your fat boys we want to see the fat boy they want to take pictures on a fat boy no other bike matters but on the flip side of that as far as sales go the fat boy is now one of the lowest selling bikes for us which is too bad because the bike is awesome. I just feel like the current customer for Harley Davidson, especially the millennials, the up and coming generation that are gravitating towards Harley Davidson, don't like the fat boy. 
They like things that handle a little bit better. They're not about the big fat tires, especially like the chopper. The chopper craze that went on in the early 2000s is completely dead at this point. People want a bike that can handle and that they can ride hard to the twisties. And they just, that, that big fat bulky style that really made the fat boy iconic that, you know, Willie G really hit on it real hard in the 90s and, and hit a home run with it. That style has kind of gone the way of the Buffalo now. And this, this modern rider, at least in Southern California, really isn't interested in, any, in it anymore. I do think that this style is still trending in places like Australia and areas of Europe where I see a lot of people customizing these bikes. And personally, I think they look amazing. I love the fat, nice, bulky look of the Fat Boy. But with the younger millennial generation gravitating towards bikes like the Lowrider S and the Dynas, the Street Bobs, the Lowriders, their fat counterparts are just not selling as well. So I want to take a survey guys and please participate. If you click in the card on the upper right hand corner of the screen, it will take you to a poll. I want to know how many people think that the fat boy name was taken from the atom bombs and kind of some of the styling cues that I talked about in the video. And how many of you think that that's totally bogus made up and that the people at Harley Davidson are in fact being truthful when they say there are absolutely no ties and no atomic bomb references on this bike. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are and let me know what you guys think about the 30th year anniversary fat boy i think the thing is beautiful i think just from a styling and look standpoint you cannot beat this bike this bike just looks absolutely sinister just badass to the core thanks a lot for watching guys if you're looking for this bike they're probably all gone by now uh, some of the bigger dealers out there are probably going to get another one in a, in a couple months i know we have one more coming the first one we sold but these are a very limited run uh, we are taking deposits on our last one it's kind of first come first serve. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Take care. See you on the next one. Bye.